What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play uh, 999. I was about to say Zero Escape 999, but I never say that. Anyways, back to 999 Blind. In the last episode, we had some quality time chatting with Clover, where we kind of narrowed down the potential suspects for Zero, and we're looking at Santa, and Seven is pretty suspicious. However, Ace has some something he wants to say to us, and has pulled us aside, so... What is it, Ace? What did you want to talk about? Ace looked at Junpei and smiled. Man, the silence is it's getting to me. <laughs> Perhaps more of a smirk than a smile. There was something I wanted to check. Yeah? What's that? <laughs> if you'll excuse me. Huh? With no warning, Ace slipped his hand into the pocket of Junpei's vest. Why? Hey, what what the heck are you doing? I'm just checking. <laughs> no, stop! He reached for Ace's arm, but it was already too late. Uh, in the older man's hand were the pieces of paper Junpei had balled up and hidden in his pocket. Oh, did Ace see through it? Just as I thought. <laughs> what exactly are these pieces of paper hiding in your pocket? Well, there's no no turning back now. You switched them, didn't you? When we voted. Oh, well, I can't say that I care. That said, it is pretty revealing to know that somebody would go to such lengths. <laughs> I managed to get through the number door I wanted, despite your mischief. Then, why did you... Oh, simple curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. There's no way I can accept an answer like simple curiosity, right? In such a tense situation, with such an, such an aggressive action coming from somebody typically so reserved, there's no way I can say, oh, it's just simple curiosity. There's got to be some motive for wanting to know such information. And for even suspecting such a thing in the first place. He smiled, gave Junpei a friendly pat on the shoulder, and then turned on his heel and left. It was a small defeat, but it was a defeat. Junpei had lost the upper hand, and he knew it. He could feel his stomach begin to tense. Darn. Maybe, if anything, it, it frames it like he and Clover are potentially zero. That's not a very good uh, position to be in. So, real quick, before I forget, we have this pocket watch that is pointing to a specific time. And I don't think we've looked over this area just yet, so let's let's investigate a bit. There's another room on the other side of the window. All right, the helm. Well, steering wheel might be a more appropriate term. <laughs> okay, a compass. It appears to be broken, however. You see, the glass cover has been smashed to pieces. Has it? I get. I guess so. Um, anything else? What about in these drawers? Ah, oh, this isn't good. So many drawers, but nothing inside them. How about these guys over here? A desk. Anything in the drawers? Nope. Okay. Um, then I don't really see a whole lot more... I don't really see a whole lot more to investigate here. So we'll turn this way. Just be safe. What happens if I click this way? This is leading to the other room, potentially? This is a lock. Oh, it's a, it's a lock of some sort. It's got a weird-shaped indentation on it. Huh? This shape. Maybe it does look like the pocket watch would fit here. Nothing. I imagine the pocket watch is intended to go in there. However, we may need to do something with the watch first. Yeah, we probably have to set it to the right time or or something like that in order to en enter that door. What about this door? This is back over here. Okay, yeah, we've already inspected this room. Wait, no, that's the... Are you trying to open the door? Forget it, it's pointless. I tried it earlier. It won't open. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's not what I was trying to do. Sorry, Clover. Didn't want to give you the wrong idea. So what about this over here? Is that anything of interest? I guess not. What about the vent? Anything in here? 
What is this, some kind of display? <laughs> Looks a little like an electronic scoreboard. Oh, I totally thought it was like an air vent or something. I imagine it was added recently. Okay. Like at an airport. There's nothing on it right now, though. I mean, I'd imagine you could display instructions or coordinates or something like that. Doesn't seem like there's a whole lot useful we found thus far. What do we have going on here? An engine order telegraph. They use this on old ships to adjust the speed of the ship. Like the gear shift in a car? Well, it's a little different. This device doesn't connect directly to the engine. In short, it's a transmitter. The navigation officer uses it to set the speed of the ship, and it sends a signal to the engine. There's a handle on top of it, which can be moved back and forth to... Hold on. Huh? There's no handle. You're right. There isn't. So we're probably gonna have to find something we can use as a handle. I also remember we were given instructions at one point for how to go about one particular, I don't know, sailing trip or whatever. I forget exactly <laughs> where it was and all, but it looks as though it was deliberately removed. Fair enough. Okay. Um... Anything else of, of relevance over here? There's a metal plate bolted over the window. <laughs> Reminds me of Danganronpa. Wooden board. Nothing suspicious here. A steering wheel. There are handles placed at regular intervals so that it's easy to turn. Old school. Hey. A handle? What? Can I, can I take it or... No, I guess? Can I take one of the pegs, maybe? I probably have to go and inspect that in and of itself. Okay, anything else of interest over this way? A light? <laughs> no, it doesn't seem so. Okay, so let's take a look at this compass. A compass. And what destiny does it point us to? I really hope you don't think that sounded cool. <laughs> Ace is so disappointed. Sorry, Ace. Sorry to shatter your dreams. How about this steering wheel? This one, is, we're able to be a lot more interactive with, it seems. Let's see if it... Whoa! Looks like the steering wheel moves. So it would seem. I noticed something else as well. What's that? Well, when you move this wheel, the compass also moves. What do you mean? The ship. It's moving. Ah, oh, tricked you, didn't I? The wheel and the compass must be connected to one another somehow. Hmm, do you think that's important? Absolutely. Well, let's try turning it again. What's worth noting, I guess, is that we're maybe not necessarily turning the ship as if the ship is moving, but the compass may respond to the wheel independent of how the ship is actually moving. I, I, I bet we're gonna have to emulate a particular trip. Oh, I can click stop at any point. And it seems like it only goes to the nearest pointer on the, on the compass. Interesting. So, okay. Well, that's good to know for sure. There's this, and I think that's, is that all we have to work with? Hmm. This room is just like the other one, metal plates bolted over the windows. Heck, not just bolted, it looks like they've been welded on. No way in heck are we going to get those off anytime soon. Alright, let's see what I've got in my items here. So I can't really do anything more with that. What about in my file? Oops. Menu, come back. So, the medical record, the ship's log, right? Yeah, so we're going to be given directions. We headed south and west. We turned southwest to steer around the continent, then proceeded northwest. Interesting. Um, and there was something else that indicated this, yeah. Southwest, southwest, northwest, east, north, and straight. There's a word next to each point on the map. Full, half, slow, full, half, dead, stop. That's what it says. So the nautical table is going to be what we're probably going to be spending a lot of time with in this particular area. That said, is there a way to... Hmm. There's dead slow and stop. A head or... A stern. Interesting. I guess that makes sense. I never thought of a head in terms of like A as in like... I guess like before or like leading to the head I guess and then a stern would obviously be towards the back of the boat but huh neat so can I like break off a handle or something maybe if I entered in directions in that order can I not look at the 
<sighs> there must be a clue here somewhere that will help us solve it. Have you found anything? Perhaps something with the points of compass on it? Yeah, don't worry, we're, we're good. We're good. I just need to... I, I wish they would allow us to look at items while we're doing the puzzles, because otherwise it just... Um, otherwise it's just, you know, a little bit of a hassle. Regardless, the beauty of technology is I'm just going to take a picture of it with my phone, and that way I can look at it. Because I'm not looking to spend a lot of time just trying to memorize it for the sake of doing so. So the first thing is going to be south, I believe. And stop. Okay. And then next will be west. Okay. And then southwest. Alright. Now up to northwest. Okay. And then east. East? I thought you said west. <laughs> I think of that literally every time I give compass directions. And now back to north. And then straight. <laughs> what the? The handle came off. <laughs> stooping so low. Are you zero? zero? Wait, why stooping so low? Hmm. Alright, well regardless, it's pretty clear what we should be using this handle for, right? Beating Ace over the head, am I right? <laughs> that was... A bad joke. So, I sure hope this handle fits. Yes, it fits. Excellent. Aw, it's so nice to see Ace all happy like that. That should allow us to operate the engine order telegraph. Let's give it a shot. Whoa. This interface, though. So, can I just click on them? So, let's go to full. Then half. Then slow. Then full. Then half. Then dead. Then stop. Huh? That's weird. I thought I put in the right speed. Did I mess up? No, I don't think so. Look, something's happened on the back wall of the wheelhouse. Yeah, you're right. Let's check it out. Okay, so let's take a look at that scoreboard-like area, right? Ooh, what's... what's all... Cork? El, pa El Paso? Rostuk? Or... Rostock, Rostock, Loam, Santos, I'm curious. There's something on the wall that looks kind of like an arrival board. There are a whole bunch of words on the left side of the display. What the heck is this? They're names of ports across the world. Oh. I imagine it's showing us the ship's route. So given this, then what, right? <laughs> you know, just like the ones you might see at an airport. Parting XX, carrier XX, flight, etc. Et like that. Oh, I get it. It does look like those are the names of all the ports along the ship's route. It looks like only one of those has a time on it, though. The time on the last line, right? Ten seconds past three o'clock. Perhaps that's the arrival time? It's probably what we have to set our pocket watch to. Can I do something with that? Can I interact with it? Mechanical pocket watch with a spring and doesn't appear to be working. The hands have stopped at 5 minutes, 39 seconds, past 10 o'clock. Turning the knob does nothing. Yeah, it's probably broken. It looks as though you can move the hands, however. Can I, can I move them? Can I move them? Please, I want to move them! Okay. So, it was what? It was like 3 minutes and 10 seconds? I forget exactly what it was. Um, the last line says, 10 seconds past 3 o'clock. Okay. 10 seconds? Whoa, what's he doing? Excuse me, Junpei. Hey, he just took my pocket watch. Hey, what the heck are you doing? Just trust me. Exactly what I was trying to figure out how to do. As I'm sure many players were at this point. It should be fine now. Well, thanks for giving me the pocket watch back, but you don't need to look so smug about it. Let's see what he... Oh! He moved the hands. Ten seconds past three o'clock. Oh, so you change it to match the final arrival time. Ace nodded slowly. You know what to do next, right? Give it a shot. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. All right, so let's head back. And then lastly, looks like this is the only exit. Oh, yeah, 
<laughs> I missed the lock, I guess. Looks like this is some sort of lock. It's got a weird shaped indentation on it, actually. Come on. Let's try putting this in there. And it opens. Nice. Yes, it says open now. Good work. It seems you were successful. Well done, Junpei. Yeah, because Junpei did so much of that. Hey! Clover! In comes Clover. What? Look, we unlocked the door. Now we can get out of this room. She doesn't look so hot. Oh, well, let's go then. Clover. Aw. That's always sad. So out we go. Is that the end of it? You found it! I'll admit, I wasn't too thrilled about this particular escape. <laughs> it seemed pretty, pretty straightforward and like my hand was held throughout it, but nevertheless, here we are progressing the story. A hallway? It's far too narrow to be called one. They found themselves in a small space outside of the wheelhouse. Huh. On their left was a wooden door. This seems to be the only route. Ah, go. Yeah, let's go. Junpei pushed it open and stepped into the room beyond. What are we gonna find in here? Uh. Wow. It was full of all manner of turn of the century electronic equipment. Wow. Well, huh? these machines are weird. I've never seen any of them before, huh? Wait, this one is... What is that? One smaller machine had a metal bar that ended in a circular handle. Ace seemed to recognize it. Ah, uh, uh, yes, a telegraph key. These were used to transmit Morse code a long time ago. He turned and slowly took in the room. This must be the communication office. Across the room from the door they'd entered through was another door. And that door? A metal plaque was nailed to it. It read, Captain's Quarters. Huh. That's what it says. What's kind of interesting is they, for some reason, the localization changed it to Captain's Quarters, when it really should probably read Captain's Cabin, according to what Junpei said. Then, do you think... I doubt we're going to find Zero in there. I'm Zero, the captain of this ship. I mean, he can be the captain, doesn't mean he has to be in the captain's quarters. Ace swallowed. Junpei could feel his hands begin to sweat. Only Clover seemed unaffected. Well, we won't know if we don't open it. It's a valid point. She walked up to the door and put her hand on the knob. Just reminds me of Luigi opening doorknobs in Luigi's Mansion. I love that little animation. It opened easily, and without so much as a pause, she walked in. Junpei and Ace followed. The first thing they saw was a dead body! Oh, it is a dead body! <laughs> I was right! <laughs> was a man on the floor, covered in blood. Da -da. Kinda reminds me of Igor. Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Don't worry, listeners, I got you covered. Junpei felt his body seize up, his mouth went dry, and he felt very, very cold. The blood in his veins slowed to a crawl, and his heart tightened like a fist. Not again. Is this someone we even know? This was the third time he'd seen the horror of death laid out before him. He didn't think it was something he could stand to see much more of. Still, he had begun to accept that whatever it was that he saw, whatever happened to him, was beyond his control. And whatever force controlled him was driven by a determination that he could not hope to match. Darn. A sense of helplessness, desperation, washed over him. It left behind a feeling of utter emptiness that wormed its way through his body like acid. No. Wait. Yeah, I was gonna say, we, we didn't check his pulse yet. You're gonna wanna make sure of that before, I don't know, typical zombie game, and he just 
grabs your feet or something like that, and then it's an all-out brawl. Or... Maybe he's still alive. Fueled by that spark of hope, Junbei ran to the man's body, and his heart fell. Yikes. When he touched his hand to his neck, interesting. There's a there's one of the watches or one of the bracelets on his arm. No pulse. His pupils had dilated and he wasn't breathing. Well, he's dead. Darn, if only we knew how it happened. At the very least, it doesn't seem like he, his body got scattered all over the room from blowing up due to a rule breaking or whatever his number was. Jubei lifted the man's already stiff body. There was a deep red wound on his chest. These wounds. I wonder what killed him. Jubei did not have to wonder long. Ah. Dang, that, that seems rough. It must have been this. For lying next to the corpse was an axe. The entire blade of it was drenched in bright red blood. From the shape of the man's wound, there could be no doubt that it had been made by the axe. That said, for those of us or those of us that have played Dong Rampa, that doesn't mean the person was killed by the axe. For all we know, those wounds could have been imposed post mortem. Junpei looked at the body again. A lake of blood stretched around it. It was wearing the clothes of a ship's captain, although they were stained with blood. And again, typical you know, murder mystery skeptic of me is saying, okay, despite this person looking like a captain, they could have been set up to look like a captain and died as, as such. But do we really know that this person was actually the captain? These clothes. <laughs> a captain. It's a reasonable assumption, and it's probably the best assumption to make to work off of, but it is worth noting, it may or may not be true. Does that mean this guy was zero? No. If anything, I would say it means that the captain of the ship was killed and replaced by someone called Zero. On his left hand was a bracelet. The number on the bracelet was, is it going to be zero? Zero. Okay, maybe, maybe things are getting a bit interesting then. I still am not convinced that this is actually Zero, the same Zero that put all of us here, the same Zero that set up all these instructions for this game. I wouldn't be surprised if the real Zero set up something like this for the sake of distracting the, the players of the Notary game or something like that. Bracelet Zero. It was only then that Junpei noticed the stench of blood that filled the room. Something worth noting is, how could Zero have died, right? The, I mean, Zero is clearly behind the number one door, right? There would need to be a group of people that opened the number one door to get here, unless, you know, the map indicates that there's some alternative means of getting here. It is possible that Zero killed himself, should this actually be Zero. But, the, you know, it's not like I'm 100% sold on this idea just yet. <laughs> He couldn't help but laugh. There was nothing else for him to say. It was too simple. Too obvious. Too straightforward. If there hadn't been a dead man on the floor, Junpei might have thought it was a joke. Junpei? It may be wise to find a way out of here first. Yeah. You're right. Also, something worth noting is that given how automated the entire nonary game has been up until this point. Cool, we gotta seek a way out again. But given how automated everything has been up until this point, it's safe to say that even if Zero is dead, they still have to respect the nine hour limit given. <laughs> For some reason, the beginning of this song reminded me of the, the Wii Shop channel music. All right, so the captain's quarters, let's take a look. Now we're talking more of like a crime scene investigation. There's blood on the chair. Do you think this was the dead guys? Yeah, probably. I mean, for all we know, we don't know what the killer looks like. Could be blood from them, but probably is a correct answer. If you ask me. Is there anything else worth noting? Kind of creeping me out. Sorry about that. There's something metallic on top of that table. 
Hey, is that a music box? Well, let's have a look. Okay. So I gotta zoom out to get over there. So we have a music box. Probably need to play a particular song. Oh, it's one of those old music boxes. How about we wind it up? And that sounded very off. <laughs> that did not sound like how it was supposed to be, I'd imagine. Well, why does it sound like that? Is it broken? The pins on the cylinder are shaped all weird. I don't think those are the pins. It looks like someone put something else on top of it. I think we're gonna have to take it apart to figure out what's going on, don't you? Interesting, so... So maybe something is hidden within this music, bo music box and you're supposed to reason so, so um, after listening to it and realizing that something is not <laughs> quite right. It's a lamp. But it doesn't turn on. I don't think there's anything special about it. Okay, good to know. Small table. Ooh, this, this music is interesting. What's going on here? <laughs> a camcorder. At first I thought when they were showing the the layout of the room that this camcorder slash tripod was supposed to indicate our perspective but no there's there's just a real camcorder in the room it looks like it's pointed at the door well the power's on why would someone want to videotape a door they maybe want to see who comes through they maybe want to see the inputs of this pad here that's all i can think no dice doesn't matter what i push on here it's not working I don't think the power's on. Just in general. Okay. So we gotta work on that first. There's a plaque on the door, but it doesn't say anything. Interesting. So this is clearly the objective of this part right now. A bed. There's nothing in it. How confident are you, Clover? Actually, before I before that, I want to check the window slash curtains. Doesn't seem like there's anything there. Got plenty of monitors, and they're in front of I think this probably used to be a door. Nobody's going through it as long as this metal plate's here, though. Well, even without the metal plate, the desk's in the way. What's this down here? They look like batteries. There's a cable running from them to the monitor. Interesting. So, power has been kind of globally shut down, but batteries have selectively been used for these monitors. A chair. It's straightforward enough. All these monitors checking out all these different areas. There's just some random hallway on this one. This screen shows the big hospital room. This screen showing what's happening at the central staircase on B-Deck. This screen shows what's going on in a small room somewhere that I don't recognize. Hmm, maybe worth noting for the future. Something else worth noting is what if we catch some shady stuff going on via these monitors. This one shows the central staircase on C-Deck. I don't recognize the room on this one. The room on the screen looks really fancy. Yeah, you right. There's a bunch of weird buttons on here. They probably switch what you see on the screens. Do you know how to work this thing? Um, why don't we just press one of these? Like this one. Oh. Well, I guess it does change the... <laughs> wow, so we got a couple paragraphs of text. We've got the camcorder in the middle and then zero at the bottom. What the heck is this? <laughs> huh. Junpei snorted with grim humor for the second time since he'd come into the room. The four screens along the bottom had a single letter each, spelling out... Z -O -E -R -O -K. Zero. Huh. It's like he's making fun of us. Definitely does seem so. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. Clover nodded. Mm, nothing. It seemed that she cared about little. Of course, Junpei could hardly blame her. Given the strain she was surely under, Junpei was somewhat surprised she had responded at all. Still, he had to ask. He gestured toward the corpse. What about him? Do you think that's really zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero is one of us. Yeah, right. 
I wonder if I wonder if they're like two zeros, right? Like the other groups that also find that also progress through their rooms, safely make it to the dead, etc. Also find zero corpses. Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be zero. Hmm? Don't you get it? I guess I I don't quite get it right now. The letters that spell zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes he's got on. And, of course, the bracelet with a zero on it. <laughs> it's too obvious. I mean, that's that's more of a hunch. It's not like a, oh, this person can't be zero. Like, just take a look at it. It's obvious, right? <laughs> Look, look, this is zero right here. This dead body is zero. Isn't that kind of fishy? Absolutely. But it's far from proof. You're right. Only an idiot wouldn't see through something like that. No, that's that's not the point. <laughs> What's the point, Junpei? I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. Yeah, I would say this is more so the line of thinking. I'm sure they didn't think it would work, which makes me wonder why did they do it? I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all this. He's making fun of us. Interesting. Challenge is on. Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking about with a zero brace bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said I did it. Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything zero is supposed to be. Just like we did. The killer must have known we wouldn't think he was zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Hmm, why would that be the case? Why? <laughs> These aren't really like like the the rational explanations I'm I'm expecting, but like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers, this isn't zero. Where's the real me then? See if you can catch me. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. That's really twisted, but it almost seems kind of childish. And it kind of makes sense given that Zero is probably enjoying the fact that everybody's playing the nonary game. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. Jupe bent down next to the corpse. Alright, let's get back to the point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is? Why would I? Hmm. 
Junpei sat back on his haunches and thought. We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Yeah, it's kind of sucky to search a dead body, but that's probably the best thing to do. Give me a hand here, Clover. What's Ace been up to this entire time? Huh? We've got to flip him over. How else are we going to search his pockets? Clover didn't move. Fine. Guess I'll do it. Jubei had no choice but to move the body on his own. Where did, Where is Ace in this entire thing? Here we go. He grabbed hold of an area not completely covered in blood and shoved. And how'd that go? It took a moment, but eventually Junpei felt the man's bulk begin to shift. Doesn't seem like the smallest of people either. But just as it did... Huh? Something fell. From the man's left wrist. It was the bracelet. No. Hey, it's the... The bracelet with zero on the face. Interesting. <laughs> Lastly, let us dis discuss how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One, you escape from this ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. Yeah, makes sense enough. Interesting. So it's because this person is dead. Oh god. Junpei stared at the bracelet. This man. He's dead, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Huh? A little late to that party, Junpei. Huh? No, it's just... I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. If his bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. He looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though, you know? I mean, if there wasn't all this blood, he'd almost look like he was still alive. Yeah, minus the, you know, axe wounds. It's probably not something to say to someone whose brother, you know, died from one of those less fortunate means of dying, you know, exploding. I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Junpei, nice. The lack of sensitivity is astounding. Dying from a bomb, bomb going off inside you, I mean, that's just... And now you're talking directly about his, her brother? Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. I think the explosion must have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. Junpei, not the time. And suddenly Junpei realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He clapped his hands over his mouth. But it was already too late. He turned to look at Clover. She was glaring at him furiously. What did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he had done. But he tried anyway. Oh man, I am I am so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean No, that's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? Huh? That it was broken with the bone sticking out arm? 
Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Is there is this going to reveal some inconsistency in what was told to her by someone else? Well, yeah, I, I did, but I mean, didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. There was no way I was going to see the details. Clover took a quick, deep breath. Wait, why is this arm so important? Are you sure it was his left arm? Junpei thought back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? Huh? What? What is this leading to? Is that like the arm he would use for self-defense or something to prove that he was maybe like assaulted or something like that? What the heck are you getting at here? Yeah, Clover, Clover, what is the point of all this? She's clearly deducing something. But we're going to find out what that something is in the next episode. I am really looking forward to finding out exactly what's going to be revealed here. Clover clearly has some understanding of Snake that exceeds beyond what everybody else can, you know, know about him for obvious reasons. And clearly it's clashing with what Junpei just told her regarding his death. And I hope this elicits some really cool new information. And I'm pretty confident it will. I'm also excited because this puzzle in particular seems like it's going to be a bit more um, challenging than the previous one, which I think was a little bit lackluster, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm definitely looking forward to more of the game, and I hope you guys are as well. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>